Hi, this is the review of year one, sometimes known as Y1. I call it round one. So now you know all the terminology in case I'm saying round or year. Each round is a year, and I think the nomenclature in the game is they use Y1, Y2, Y3. Anyway, net profits per team. So if we're talking strategy, <clears throat> company strategy, the goal of any firm for profit firm is to maximize shareholders wealth. That means to maximize net profits. So that's the top line goal strategy. How you maximize your profits, there are different strategies you can take to maximize your profits. And we see here that a number of teams have over $50 million of profits in round one. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 teams, excellent results for year one to get $50, $50 million of net profits. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're running an automobile company. These are not you know, companies that are, are, that are being run as a charity. They're being run to generate profits. So you have to figure out what is your best mix of choices to maximize your profits. Okay, so let's move on to points. So points, I'll talk about a little bit more how points are calculated. Every team except for one team here, the go-getters, uh, made points. So you should, the first round is the easiest round to make points. And this is why you should watch this video to the very end, because I'm gonna answer a lot of frequently asked questions. And <clears throat> one of the most frequently asked questions is, how come in round one I made 900 points, but in the other rounds I can't make 900 points? This is because you're taking over from a failed, flawed, horrible management team. So your, your points are measured in year-over-year -year progress. So it's very easy in the first year to make good progression over the terrible management team that was just fired and you were hired to replace them. Now, in round two, you're going to be competing against yourself. So it's going to be harder and harder as you're doing better and better to get your year-over-year -year points uh, higher and higher. But the bar for the class is set pretty low as far as total cumulative points you need. And many teams already are, if I'm asking for 2,500 points, many teams are, you know, a third of the way there already. And that's just round one. And these are cumulative points. So it doesn't, I'm only looking for really an average performance to get a full grade in this project. Uh, many students will do above average performance, which will be great, but students who uh, put very little effort into the simulation may wind up with below average results. So it's really the um, amount of effort you put in. Did you read the student user guide, the student manual? Did you watch the videos I sent to explain the simulation? Have you tried numerous practice rounds? These are all things that can help improve your score. Okay. So moving on to stock price. So we have uh, a leader in stock price, green wood vehicles. Now, if you notice, um, let's see, green wood vehicles also had the highest amount of, uh, let's see, 56, 56, eight. Yep, they had the highest amount of net profits. So what happens when a stock has good net profits, high earnings per share, custom, um, stockholders rejoice and buy more shares and the stock price goes up and the team with the lowest amount of net profits obviously has the lowest stock price so the first thing you need to correlate here is oh maximizing net profits helps enhance stock price which is true in the real world okay sales we have a team uh, hungry autos that is number one in sales so you might ask yourself um we have these two teams the go-getters and you might say well the go-getters why are they last place in points and last place in um, net profits and in points and in stock price when they got number two in sales? This doesn't make sense. This is not very real world. Well, that's a common frequently asked question. And the answer to that is, I'll give you an example. Here are two companies I'm going to give to you for free. You decide which of the two companies you would like. Company A has $500 billion in sales. Company B has 50 million in sales. <clears throat> Which company would you rather have? So most people would say the company that has 50 billion in sales. But then I tell you, okay, 
the company that has 50 billion in sales has seven trillion dollars in losses and the company that has 50 million in sales has 40 million in profits now which company would you rather own so you see it's not who has the most sales it's who generates the most profits on the sales they do have so I rather own a company with less amount of sales so maybe a company in here uh, that has you know only instead of having 270 250 million in sales maybe around 200 million in sales if a good majority of those sales are profits so yes it's good to have a high number of sales but make sure those sales translate into profits so anybody so um, if I wanted to have own a car company with the number one sales in the world I could do that in 10 minutes all I have to do is build a um, a $50,000 truck and sell it for $5,000 I would outsell every competitor on the planet and sell multiple millions of this truck if I sold it at $5,000 and the customers are getting a truck worth $50,000 so I would be number one in sales but I would not last long because I'd be such such in the hole for losses so just something to think about okay earnings per share and of course we have number one team in um, stock price and in net profits is also the number one team in earnings per share so earnings per share go up share stock prices go up something to consider okay and this is just the mix of sales and you can see that as far as uh, total units we have we have a range from anywhere from 6,000 total units to 8,000 total units being sold and as far as this is just another sales chart here okay so those are the charts uh, if we look at the rankings here we see that you can go to leaderboard and we see that this team we have three teams with a thousand points this is great so I'm asking for you to have 2,500 cumulative points cumulative points so they these teams are more than a third of the way there and they still have five more rounds to earn points and the next round don't forget is on June 4th so they're weekly okay um, so three teams so any team here that's above 600 um, is doing well in fact um, I, I, I if you look at you need 2,500 points over six rounds so really any team that's over 450 points is on target to get those full points and most teams are on target we only have a few teams that are are trending below target but don't worry it's easy to catch up and make up for lost points because it's a year-over-year -year analysis which I'll go over in a minute um, remember watch the video to the end because I'm going to give a lot of good hints and helpful tips and explanations coming up um, okay so and the reason I say watch the video to the end is because I do get a full amount of uh, analytics back in these videos and I see for a lot of the videos people watch five minutes and stop watching so that's why I'm saying watch to the end okay so gross profit margin the companies if you took a minute to figure out what your starting gross profit margin was which was 40 percent we're taking you know gross profits divided by sales so all these companies who were above 40 percent are doing improving if your company is at 40% or below you've destroyed your profit margin or you kept the profit margin the same which is not what investors want or your profit margins have gone down in the real world when stocks companies announce that their profit margins are going down their gross margins the stock price goes down investors sell the company investors become unhappy so your job is to make sure that every round you're increasing your profit margins and I'll show you how to do that in a minute okay so this is stock price we went over that before and return on equity looks again looks at your the equity that you that investors put into the company and the return on the equity so um, that's a measure of again profitability total points they're cumulative so right now you only have round one in there when you have round two they'll be added together and total points will show you these are the cumulative points that your score is based on okay so the oper operating profit margins this is going to look at after you pay for the um, expenses of running the business you get your operating profit margin and then finally and see you know your earnings per share 
is simply your net profits divided by outstanding shares. And your return on assets is going to be your the profits over your assets. And your net profit margin is your bottom line, <clears throat> total percentage profits made. These are all, um, these financial ratios uh, are covered in many classes, accounting, finance, um, just to name two off the bat. Okay, so let's go into, this is a company, this is the top performing company here, so I don't want to look at that. I'm going to go into an example company, hold on. So here is a company that is in our class, but I have a, um, an, an example account in here, so I can show you a review year two without specifically picking on a company that students are actively working on because I don't want to uh, embarrass anybody or upset anybody by comments I might make about their actual company. So here's a company that's competing in our class competition. So the first year, this company, I just rolled them forward, which means if you don't complete your round, you get forced forward. So it just copies the previous year's information over. So the first thing you do when you're in what they say is Y2 here, which is year two, I'm gonna look at the overview points. So here for each category, I have year zero and year one. So year one was what was just completed and it compares the year over year change. So this went from 12 dollars per share revenue per share to 21 so a 77 percent increase so i earned 77 points get it each percentage increase year over year is a point so profit margins here went from 40 to 48 percent a 19 percent increase operating profits went up 25 percent and net profits went up 28 percent total asset turnover was down by 15 percent well why is that well i must have had purchased a lot of assets, or I may have leftover inventory, which is an asset, which is pulling back on my return on a, uh, my total asset turnover. If you look at the student user guide, it will contain all the financial ratios and how they're calculated. Um, so my return on equity is up, my turn on my equity multiplier, return on assets is up a small amount, earnings per share is up over 100%. So they cap it at 100% points. So even though I had 126% increase, the most points I can earn in the category is 100 points. So my market capitalization is up 100%, actually 200%. Book value is up. Okay. So now my forecasting on my, uh, I did improve my forecasting in each of the categories, so I earned points there. And I did make some operational investments. So I, I doubled, more than doubled my operational investments, so I had 100 points here. But I ran a deficit. So I lost 100 points on that deficit, which means I did not have enough cash. So you may ask, say, I'm pretty sure I left the company in a surplus. How come I have a deficit? Well, that's because you forecasted a surplus, but if you didn't sell every car that you had forecasted, you may wind up in an unexpected deficit because you don't have the profits from selling those cars that you forecasted. Okay. so you can go to this assessment tab here and if you're not sure how you did in the simulation you can get ranked on one to five stars uh, plus a descriptive so i did average revenues uh, my percentile rank is 55 percent if you want to know what a percentile rank is think about the sat gmat or gre which which ranks you against other players and my score is 21. so in some areas i did five stars or some areas i did four stars here my total asset turnover is one star, so I could click this information and get extra, get some insight on how to improve that. Same thing for return on assets. Um, operational investments are low. Cash management was poor because I had a deficit. So it says here, things to do to fix that. So very important to take the time to do the self-assessment to see how your company performed. So all the charts that I went over earlier, plus uh, extra charts in marketing and sales, in this team performance chart are available. So I always suggest looking at the team performance chart and then you can see every area from year over year. But what's really important is the bottom chart, which is um, market versus actual. And I see here that my sales met all of my potential. So if I had um, 
that's good, but it may be bad if I built too many cars. I might have a lot of leftover inventory. So you want to really build the same number of cars equal to what you're likely to sell. In the industry tab, I can see the data of the other companies and how they performed. So if I want to look to the top performing company, I could see how did they build their car, what were their labor costs, what was their sales, profit margins, demand, and their overall score. A lot of times uh, students will say, well, this is unrealistic that you get all this information about these other companies. And I say to them, well, you must not live in the real world because in the real world, all these public auto companies release financial statements that release all the financial information about the company. And you can walk into any showroom or go to any website and find out all the specifics of how the car, all the features and specifics of how the car is built, um, including what the sales prices are, uh, profit margins. So this is pretty standard information you can get, not current year, but previous year. This is year one and we're in year two. You have your financials are completely backed up here that you can review. And then you start again in your sales page. So last year's decisions are saved here. And you see here that the operational cost reduction is 600. So that means when I build my car, I get, it's gonna, I get a, um, a reduction. So it's gonna cost me $630 to put 14 luxury items in the car. I get a reduction, cost reduction. So it's really only costing me $30. So that's important to keep your company moving ahead, investing in robotics and in software and equipment to maintain a competitive edge in your manufacturing. So as I'm trying to rebuild the car here, I want to make sure that I am increasing my uh, features, doing better than I did last year because customers' expectation ranges have moved up. So customers are expecting more. So I'm going to hopefully increase my gross profit. Uh, and then I'm going to also try to increase my forecasting. Now, you might say, well, how do you forecast? Well, I'll go, uh, the easiest thing, the easiest way to forecast is to go to the student manual and read over, I mean, for, you know, the student manual is only about 15 pages and there's a lot of pictures, so don't tell me you don't have the time to read this over. Um, so I'm looking here in year two, it gives me, if you read this, it gives me the average expectations of sales if your car is nothing but average. So... If your car is better than average, you should probably forecast higher. Worse than average, forecast lower. So that's so at least it gives you sort of a box to play in. All right. So now as I'm forecasting here, the okay. So I'm coming. I'm confident with that forecast. And again, I'm hopefully trying to build a better car than last year. So that way. Uh, I can improve my profit margins. So I'm going to go through. And sometimes you get these warnings that tell you that, you know, there's certain minimums you have to hit. All right. Now, I don't suggest you duplicate 100% what I'm doing here because I'm just kind of throwing numbers in together. Uh, and this is truck. It's 200. If you remember, this is what I can make a high price on the luxury car because customers don't really care about the price. No one wants a discount luxury car, but I just got to make sure that my luxury features are within the customer's expectations. And I can go above, above or below the customer expectations. All right. Okay, so I'm going to submit my sales data and move on to marketing. Now, um, marketing is going to take a while, so I'm going to put in my marketing, but I'm going to pay close attention to what the expected range of the R class environment is going to spend. And I'm going to also refer to the student user manual to get an idea of how effective each of the different media is in advertising. Okay, so now I'm in the production area, so I'm going to, oh, so I see I had a lot of leftover um, inventory. So when it says current inventory, 
this is last year's unsold vehicles. This is why I had an unexpected deficit because I built more cars than I could sell. They were left unsold, which those sales didn't translate into profit. So I had this unexpected deficit where I expected a surplus, but that's okay because I can refurbish them and sell them this year. I don't need a new production plant here. I don't need, and you want to make sure that you have no excess or shortage. You produce exactly what your forecast is less your current inventory. But another important thing is I want to make sure that I'm investing in these operational investments because this is what's going to help keep my company profitable. And by producing bigger and bigger cost reductions. So my strategy is to try to make a cars that have a lower cost so I can have a higher profit. So again here, I don't need an extra, if I was gonna build more cars, I might have to buy a new production plant, but I don't need that production plant right now. <clears throat> so I'm gonna leave it. No need to buy, why would you buy an extra factory production plant if you don't need to make any cars with it? And I've seen students do this where they buy an extra, have some extra money, so they buy an extra factory that's gonna produce no cars. So think of a whole factory sitting there full of equipment and employees, but not doing anything for a full year. What a waste of money. And that's what, you know, your capacity utilization is not being improved. So you wanna make sure that you only buy factories when you need them. Okay, so I'm gonna just buy some operational, okay. I'm going to submit my production data and see what my financials look like. All right, so we'll go to the very bottom. Okay, so I have a small surplus, which is good. I'm going to go back to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, borrow some additional funds. So I want to make sure that I don't wind up in a situation where, so 18 million um, surplus is good because I don't want to have another unexpected deficit in case I don't sell everything I promised to sell. So I'm going to keep that. Now by there is, um, so it's good to have a surplus, but by borrowing additional funds, which is sometimes unavoidable when you start up a company, this is going to change my return on equity, my debt to equity ratios and my debt ratios and my, the amount of outstanding shares. So if I'm going to issue extra stock here, my outstanding shares will go up and my earnings per share. So let me just put this back to zero. Look at the stock price and earnings per share here. See how they change? So this is a consequence of issuing extra stock. So if you actually were to retire stock, you see that my earnings per share go up and my outstanding shares go down, which helped to uh, improve all my per share variables. So maybe I will retire some stock, which is a common trick companies use to help pump up their uh, earnings per share as well as all their other per share ratios by lowering the amount of outstanding shares. So I'll take a chance. This should really be, you know, 15 or 20 million in surplus. So I'll take a chance and see, hopefully I'll sell everything I forecasted. Okay, so that would be my explanation and advice for completing round two. Now again, don't copy what I did. I'm just giving you an overview at, uh, of what direction you should go in. So these are no, by no means the optimal numbers to choose, but these are just the, the right direction. I wanna push you in a little bit if you're kind of confused of where to go. And remember, you can also go, if you wanna improve your score, you read over the student user manual and you play extra practice rounds uh, to help test your strategies and see how they perform against the computer players. Okay, well that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And remember our next round is due on June 4 at 11.30 p.m. That's when the next round is being processed. So good luck on the rest of this assignment. Take care.